Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Yakub, and that's time of the week again for another STM32 tutorial. And today's tutorial is going to be about STM USB HID. So USB HID, HID stands for Human Interface Devices. So things like mouse, keyboard, and joystick. Now, USB HID is a very large topic, has got many details and complexities. But what I aim to show you today is that I'm only going to introduce to you the STM32 USB side of things. So things like how to set up a USB HID on the STM discovery board and how to run ready-made HID descriptors uh, such as mouse. Um, and in today's demo, I am going to run a mouse code on the STM32 discovery board. So when I plug it to my PC, um, the STM will act as a mouse device. Um, this is using the STM accelerometer. So when I roll it to the right or left, up and down, it should move the mouse. And when I click the blue push button on the discovery board, um, it should act as a left click button of a mouse. So let me show you how it looks before I start writing the code. So I already have the code written on my discovery board. And now when I plug it in, it should start acting as a mouse. So yeah, I've just plugged it in. Now when I roll it to the right, you see the mouse moving to the right, now to the left, up and down. All I have to do is to roll my STM and I can um, click the left button. So I'll, I'll go change a tab, for example. Sure enough, it does change. Okay, so that's how it's gonna look like. Um, so I'll use this demo to explain to you how to use USB HID on the STM uh, MCUs or discovery board. All right, so without any delay, I think that's enough introduction. Let's get started and set up a CubeMX project. Right, so going to CubeMX, um, and on CubeMX, uh, click on new project. And we need to select the right board. I am using the STM32 of 4 discovery for my demo. Um, so it's team 32 of four and it's the of four discovery. All right, and first thing we'll do here is that we're gonna clear all the pinouts and I will enable my LEDs and my push button. So PD12 to PD15 are the onboard LEDs and I enable them and I will also enable my onboard push button and that's on PA0 and I need to set it as DBIO input. Um, and then I'll use the external oscillator too, that will give me much more stable clock for the USB. So uh, on RCC peripheral, select the uh, ceramic resonator. And I'll go to the um, clock config later on to configure the clock fully. Um, and now to the main peripheral. To enable USB HID, we need to scroll down to USB fast speed or USB on the go FS and select the mode to be device only because we want to plug the STM USB, micro USB one, um, which is this one, you need to connect the micro USB in order to have this application to work. It's not the ST-Link USB. Um, then it will act as a mouse device. And that's why we select the mode to be device only. All right. And next we need to scroll up and set the USB device middleware to USB HID. So the class is, um, human interface device a class, but we need the custom one because the custom one will allow us to enter our own USB device descriptors, like the one you'll find on this website. I'll put a link to this website. So this website explain a simple mouse USB descriptor. And what custom HID allow, will allow us is that it will allow us to copy ready-made USB descriptor of a mouse, keyboard, or a joystick, and then just paste them in there and it, they will simply work, okay? Um, so we'll select a custom human interface device class. All right. Um, and next we need to go to clock configuration. I think that's everything on the pinout for now. So go to clock configurations and I'll select the external clock and I'll set the um, clock speed to 84 megahertz perhaps. And it will automatically sort out all the other clocks, including the 48 megahertz necessary for our USB application. All right, now let's go to the configuration tab. Uh, we will not change anything. We'll leave everything as default. Uh, but one more thing, one, one thing on the USB device middleware is the uh, class parameters. So this one, we need to determine the HID report descriptor size. It's set to two, but in our case, we will use, so if you use the one on this website, it's one to 25. So this is multiplied by two, this is 50 bytes. 
So the report size would need to be 50, but I will not change it in Cubamix, I'll change it on the code because we will use multiple um, descriptor reports with different sizes. Okay, so that's it. Uh, you don't need to change anything here. Click OK, and we are ready to generate the source code. So click on Generate Source Code icon. Uh, I will uh, and select allocation to store your project in. I'm going to store it at this location, and I'll call it USB HID Tutorial. And my ID is Keel version 5. Um, and I don't want to use version 16 of the um, firmware, I'd rather use 1.18. But it's up to you, you can use the default one in your PC, but I like to use the uh, version 1.18. Um, so I'll select this one. That's not something you have to do. And click OK. Um, and for any of my professional business contacts, you can get in touch with me through mutexembedded.com. Um, and for students or hobbyists who want to see more YouTube tutorials on Steam32 um, MCUs, feel free to write down in the comments so that I can add it to my weekly tutorial list. Right? Let's just wait for this to finish uh, generating the source code and it will carry on with the tutorial. Okay, source code is generated successfully. Click on Open Project and this will take you to your IDE. And the first thing we will do here on Keel is that we will compile the project just to make sure everything is set up correctly. So we'll just compile the project up and we'll go ahead and we need to um, copy certain files. So what we will do while the code is compiling is that we need to go to the USB custom HID file, the .c file, and we need to put our USB descriptor in here. And that's the USB descriptor of a device that you want to run. And as I told you, USB descriptor is beyond the scope of this tutorial. So, for example, this link, this website explains how to build a USB device descriptor. So your keyword to search here is USB HID report descriptor. And you will find a lot of tutorials on this and how to build your own for either a mouse device, a keyboard or a joystick. Um, now for this simple example, it's for a mouse. Um, so you need to copy the whatever USB HID report descriptor you have to this section of the STM code on this file. And as a starting point, I will use the STM mouse device descriptor. So this is made by ST for their demo. Um, and I used it, it works fine. So I will start, start up by using this and then we'll go ahead and use the website one at a later point, just to prove the point. So now I'll just copy this over. I have it on my notes. Um, copy it over to here, just delete the zero and put it in here. Okay, and I know I've counted them previously. Um, the size of this is 74 bytes in total. So what I need to do is I need to um, change the custom HID report size that you will find in USB config.h, I believe. Um, but I cannot go to description because I cannot go to definition because this code is still compiling. Yep, yeah. so, oh, here we go. So, USB custom HID report descriptor size is 2. I need to change it to 74 because the size of this is 74 bytes. So, that's step one that we need to do. Um, and then I've got this on my notes too. Um, and then I need to include the custom HID header into my main because um, you'll find in here um, this uses USB custom HID. Um, dot H that I need to include into my main so that I can make use of the um, library files, sorry, library functions. So let me just copy this over to my main. This will enable me to use the custom HID functions. So let me go to that file and you'll see what I mean. So this will enable me to use um, the function send report. This is the one I'd need to use in my main to send the um, HID report. I'll explain to you what HID report means. Um, okay, so that's the starting point. I have added the USB device descriptor and I changed the size and I have compiled the code without any errors. Right, so next step is that I need to add a buffer for the mouse variables. And I know that STM discovery USB descriptor it contains four bytes report. So I need to send four bytes via USB uh, to send the button data 
the X movement, the Y movement, and the scroll up and down. So a total of four operations and stored in four bytes. And that's why I need to define a variable of four bytes so that I can send the mouse data to the USB. Okay, you'll see what that means in a bit. Um, and then after that, I need to initialize those variables with the explanation, as you can see in here. So I'll initialize them um, somewhere in bigger number two, perhaps. Um, so that's very straightforward. All this is doing is, um, so I'm setting zero, which means zero is no click. Uh, one mean a left click, two mean a right click. And same for the X movement, zero is no movement. A positive value correspond to a right movement and a negative value correspond to the a left. Just like what you saw at the beginning of the demo. Um, okay, uh, and perhaps I'll define this variable in begin number one. It doesn't have to be a global variable in my case here. Um, and then what we need to do is that I am going to demonstrate a very simple um, thing. Uh, I will not do the X and Y movement for now. I'll just do the right, right click. So I'll read the button. Um, so read the push button. And based on the push button, I'll assign this one to one or zero for a left click. So that will be something like this. I'll use element number zero and I'll do hal GBIO read pen. And that will be my push button GBIO PA zero. Okay, so it's pin zero on port A. And then I need to update the USB report. So I'll find the function to send the report and the custom hid.h file. So when I open this, it's um, this function send report. So I need to use it in here um, to update my USB report. So that will send a report and it takes a, um, the first parameter it takes is the USB device of this. And that's a variable defined the USB libraries that I need to um, add as an extern. So this one is defined in the USB device. So you'll find in the device to see, I believe. Yeah, that's the one. I need to define it as an external in my main so that I can use it. Um, so as an extern. And now I can pass it to the USB uh, function in here as a pointer. And the second parameter is the mouse buffer. So the HID uh, report buffer and it's of size four bytes. Okay, and I'll add a short delay of 100 milliseconds perhaps. Okay, and that should update the mouse button state. I'm not changing any of the X, Y movement or the scroll movement. I'm only updating the button thing. So that's a very simple demo. Let me compile it, load it to the board. And what I should expect is that when I click the blue button on the STM discovery board, so when I click this blue button, I expect it to correspond to a left click of a mouse. All right, so let's wait for this one to finish compiling and we're gonna test the uh, code on our discovery board. And as I said, you need to plug in the micro USB as well, in addition to the ST-Link USB, uh, because this application is running completely on this uh, on-the-go USB. Uh, and then after that, we will demonstrate a more advanced example, just like the one I showed you at the beginning. Um, then I'll go ahead and add the accelerometer code so that you can read the accelerometer and uh, send those as a mouse report. Okay, finish compiling without any errors. Now let's load it to the board and test this uh, very basic implementation. So let me plug in my micro USB and reset my Steam board. Sure enough, now I'll just move the mouse with my uh, my computer mouse to here and I'll click the blue button on the SDM. And sure enough, it's changing tabs. So it correspond to a left click of a mouse. And that's what this code is doing. Superb. Now, let me add just more um, random things. So I'll add a positive on the X, positive three, for example, and I expect a movement of speed three to the right on the X. So let's compile it, load it to the board and see how it looks. Okay, um, now let me reset my STM. And sure enough, you see the mouse is moving. Uh, it's moving, it's scrolling towards the right. And when I set this value to negative three, for example, um, I expect it to move the other way around. I expect it to move towards the left. Okay, reset the board, and sure enough, it's moving to the left. So I hope you get the idea. So I can send those four bytes. That's a four byte mouse descriptor, and each of those will control certain thing. 
okay and I also let me just demonstrate one more thing so also for this one a left click across point to one and two is a right click so I can multiply this by two and now the button click will correspond to a right click instead of a left click um, and I'm sure you got the idea by now but I'm just trying to demonstrate as much as I can okay so now when I click the blue button on the STM sure enough it corresponds to a right click of a mouse right so that's that's the basic demos so that's how to do the basic things of um, setting up the USB HID descriptor a size and then de demoing it on a very basic way now let me do a much more exciting demo I will add the accelerometer thing to it so that I can read accelerometer X Y and I can control the XY movement with the accelerometer roll of the STM discovery and then in addition to the push button to control the left click okay so let's do that really quick it's very straightforward and after that I will show you how to use an existing a um, an existing USB descriptor from the web like this mouse descriptor for example okay so that will be very very useful so let me now use the accelerometer code first and the way we're going to do it is that it's just very similar to tutorial 27 where I've shown you how to use the three axis accelerometer uh, library I will do that myself here really quickly it's very straightforward so what we need to do let's just close the um, keel project and open cubemx back again and all we need to do here is to enable the SPI for our accelerometer device and if we can recall from tutorial 27 accelerometer device uses SPI1 so I need to set this as full duplex master and that got mapped out to be a 5, 6 and 7 and I need to enable PE3 as a chip select for uh, the accelerometer device that's it and I need to go to the configuration to uh, lower the board rate of the SPI to perhaps um, um, I'll put 16 uh, prescalers so now board rate is 1.3 megabits per second that's everything I need to do click OK and generate the source code again and back to Keel uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to copy the um, accelerometer library that I've written uh, that are part of tutorial 27 uh, but I will also include them down in the description of this video so that if you haven't watched tutorial 27 that's fine you can still carry on with this video so you'll find these two files attached down in the video uh, you need to copy them over to the tutorial MDK ARM folder so that's where we stored the project in navigate to MDK ARM folder and put the C and H file in here okay now code is generated click on open project this will take you to the keel IDE again okay and you will find that on the keel main nothing have changed so let me compile it um, and while it's compiling we'll do the changes so the main folder didn't change at all however the um, HID folder must have changed so this one the report descriptor stayed the same but when I go to the USB config.h the um, report descriptor size returned back to 2 and I need to set it back to 74 bytes because the USB descriptor report size is 74 okay and I can't seem to save um, before the compilation is done so let me wait for the compiler to finish compiling and then I'll save this change um, and I don't need this I can close it um, okay and what I'll do as well is that I need now to I have copied the library H and C file for the accelerometer now I can add them straight away to my uh, project so right click on application user oh that doesn't allow me so I have to wait for this to finish compiling first let's wait for it uh, okay could finish compiling and it seems like there is an error let's see what that error is uh, too many initialized values right okay yeah that makes sense that's because we set the size size was set by two now set the size to 74 and compile again now it should error should go um, okay so that should be it and now we can start adding our accelerometer um, library files to the project okay uh, and to add the library files accelerometer library file to the project uh, right click on application user and add existing files and it's in the mdk arm folder where we stored it um, add the C file and also the H file 
okay uh, and now i need to go to options for target as well to add the mdk arm folder path because that's where we stored the header file so add a new path and we need to add a path for the mdk arm folder and click ok okay now let me open the library c file and copy the header to our main so need to add this as an include in here so that's for our accelerometer accelerometer library okay um okay so that's added and now it seems like there's an error in there um right let me try to compile and see if that error persists because i already added the uh, path for the mdk arm folder all right okay so compiled without an errors so we'll get back to this if the error persists but that shouldn't do that okay so now we added the accelerometer library now we can go ahead and use it so uh, open the library h file and the first function we need to use is the initialize so we need to initialize the accelerometer library okay um, so we need to call it and begin number two in here to initialize the accelerometer okay um, this function takes two parameters it takes the spi handle for the accelerometer to copy the spi configuration to the library and the second parameter is the um, is a custom type diff for initializing the accelerometer so i need to define this as a variable in my main so in my bigger number zero for example and i'll call it my excel init um, diff okay and this will hold all the initializations and configuration of my accelerometer so first one is the data rate for example now data rate is um, i have defines in here for my data rates and i want this to read in 24 and 25 hertz rate okay and then the second parameter perhaps uh, second one is the axis enable and i want to enable all the axes so just like tutorial 27 i'll do it really quick in here um, so i want to enable all the axes although i'm only going to use x and y axes and then the full scale to um, four maybe and the next one is the interrupt enable i don't want to use interrupt so i'll set this to false and then the uh, anti-aliasing bandwidth uh, maybe just 200 all right okay um and then i can just pass this as a pointer to the initialize function for the configuration to take place so that's number one and the next thing we need to do is that we can now just go ahead and read the raw accelerometer data and to read the raw accelerometer data first thing we need to do is to pull for data reading because we are not using interrupt so this will go in bigger number three and we will pull for ready data so of the data um, already i'll set a timeout of 100 milliseconds if this is equal to true then we have a data ready and now we can read the raw data so we can call get raw data function in here okay and get raw data function returns a type of variable of data row that i also need to define in my main i'll define it in here i'll call it my row data okay and as you saw this in tutorial 27 this one is just a structure that holds the x y and z raw data okay you'll find it in here so this holds the x y and z data as signed into just 16 okay so the return of the get raw data should be stored in this variable or in this structure type div and then what i need to do basically is that i need to set the let me copy this over to here so whenever data is ready i want to check the bottom status and set my um, usb report and I also need to update the X and Y of my report. And X is on uh, is index one, and index two is the Y. So we'll do that. So X is index one, and that will be my raw data dot X. Uh, but I want to shift them to the eight because I only want to take the high bytes because this variable is a byte and this one is two bytes, sixteen bits. So by doing by shifting by eight, I'm only taking the most significant byte, only the high bytes. Um, and same thing I'll do for y. So index two um, is the y, okay? And I'll multiply it by negative because I know the y is uh, swapped around in the mouse from my experience. Okay, so that's it. Now 
what I should expect is that I should see exactly as I show you in the demo at the start of the video. So when I hover my STM, when I roll it to the right or left, it should move to the x-axis, right and left. And when I hover it, uh, when I roll it up and down, it should go um, up and down on the mouse too. So let me compile it, load it to the board, and we will demonstrate to you. Let me double check my, um, my guideline. Maybe I forget something. Seems like everything is there. Right, let me connect my Steam board and we'll reset the board to run the code. I'll, okay. Right, sure enough, move it to the right, to the left, up and down. And when I click the button, sure enough, that's correspond to a left click. Perfect, so this demo is working. Right, so that's how to um, use it with this. So I use the uh, mouse robot descriptor given by STM, uh, by ST Microelectronics themselves in the, one of the demos. Um, but I also, um, I also told you that I'll explain to you how to use an existing report descriptor. So now let's go one more step. And you need to, for generating USB HID report descriptors, you need to learn that from the web. So there are many tutorials on how to create your own USB report descriptor. That's beyond the scope of this tutorial, so I'll leave that for you to learn. But now, before I end the video, I will show you how to use an existing um, descriptor on the web. So for example, from this website, that I'll also include the link down in the description of the video, they have created their own custom um, USB HID robot descriptor for a mouse with only three bytes report. So the one we have here has got four bytes of report size. So we have four bytes, but in their case, they only use three bytes. And that's the USB descriptor for it. It's much shorter than ours, so I will copy it. So what you need, after you generate your own, you need to copy it to the USB custom HID in this um, array, in this static array. So I'll delete mine. Um, I'll put this one, the one from the web. And um, clearly this is of size 50 bytes, much shorter than ours. So I need to go to the config.h and change the size to 50 bytes. Okay, and it's only three bytes. So when I send the report, I will exclude the fourth one for the scroll. So it's only three bytes. But everything else seems to be exactly similar to ours, if you would look at this table. Okay, so now when I compile it and run it, it should work the same, except this one is a shorter and um, smaller USB device descriptor, but the idea is the same. And sure enough, it works exactly the same, although this is a different USB descriptor, but it's the same idea, designed differently. When I click the right button, it acts as the right button. All right, so that's everything I wanted to show you at this video. I just wanted to get you started with USB HID peripheral on the STM discovery board. Um, and that's, this brings me to the end of my tutorial today. Um, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. And as always, if you found it very helpful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And for any of my business contacts, you can get in touch with me through mutexembedded.com. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.